Samuel. Miracles are acts or events occurring by supernatural power. The power behind such act or event lies beyond the realm of man. Miracles can happen either by the power of God or by the power of Satan. The miracles that accompany the pure work of God and the true gospel of God are believed to be from the Holy Spirit. Common miracles accompanying the gospel include healing for the sick, restoration of sight to the blind, opening of deaf ears, the dumb speaking, the burying given back to children, raising the dead, casting out devils, and many other spectacular manifest manifestations in response to prayer and decree of faith in the name of Jesus. There are general ways in which God performs miracles in the ministry of his servants. There are common miracles and there are uncommon miracles. Common miracles are often repeated or duplicated. For example, I mean common miracles are often repeated or duplicated, but uncommon miracles may never be repeated or duplicated. They are not easy to come by. They don't surface easily. For example, Moses' rod was used by God to perform many miracles in the ministry of Moses. Elijah's mantle was used by Elijah and immediately, by, immediately thereafter by Elisha to part the river Jordan. Elisha multiplied oil for a widow woman. A hollow in the jawbone of an ass brought forth water for Samson to drink in answer to his prayer. Joshua stayed the sun for almost a whole day because he was battling against their own enemies. These and many of other unique miracles in the Old Testament performed by certain men of God under some circumstances were rarely or never repeated by them or duplicated in the ministry of others. The ministry of Jesus Notice some of these rare miracles, such as follows. Jesus turned water into wine. Jesus walked on the sea and immediately empowered Peter to walk on the sea. Jesus multiplied few loaves and fishes to feed several thousands of people during a gospel meeting in two separate occasions. Some people touched the hem of Jesus' garment and were perfectly healed. These, I say, are uncommon miracles. They don't often occur. They rarely occur. These were special manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the ministry of Jesus. The scripture did not record the duplication 
of any of these miracles under the ministry of any of the apostles. None of the apostles stopped to pray for himself or lead others to pray in order to walk on the water as Jesus did. Yes. None of them asked people to touch the edge of his cloth for their healing as happened under the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. None attempted to pray over little quality and quantity of food to multiply it for multitudes in a gospel meeting as Jesus did. No disciple attempted to command water to turn to wine as Jesus did. These were unique manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God can cause any of them, any of these miracles, to occur again in the ministry of any servant of His, in His discretion and sovereign decision. The apostles did not teach on any of these unique miracles in order to steer faith in the believers for them. These special manifestations of the Holy Spirit were also seen in the acts of the apostles. Such include the following. Number one, the shadow of Peter healed the sick. The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. After having baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, and he was found in Azotus. Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Apostle Paul to the sick and oppressed, and they were healed. These were uncommon manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the early church which were not taught as doctrines to the body of Christ. The shadow of Peter healed the sick. Note that the shadow of the remaining apostles, including Apostle Paul, did not heal the sick. Only the shadow of Peter healed the sick. None of the apostles prayed that his shadow should heal the sick. The ministers and Christian workers were nowhere exhorted to faith and prayer for their shadow to heal the sick. In fact, the shadow of Peter healed the sick within a given time only. After which, his shadow ceased healing the sick. For when Peter went to Joppa, and one was dead, Peter did not use his shadow to heal that person. It was the prayer of faith that reached that dead, Tabitha. And when Peter went to heal Aeneas, it was not the shadow of Peter that healed that man that was bedridden for, I think, about eight years. But Peter prayed and laid hand upon him, and he recovered. Which therefore meant, means that the shadow of Peter was not healing the sick every time. No, it was a manifestation that happened for a given time. And did not continue in Peter's ministry. So, in fact, as we say, human beings prefer.
prefer that which lies in the realm of the senses to that which lies in the realm of faith. The gospel of Christ is called the gospel of faith. For the just shall live by faith. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whosoever cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Have faith in God. For verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt it in his heart, but shall believe that that which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So, you can see, therefore, that everything lies in the realm of faith. The gospel is a gospel of faith. Now, had the shadow of Peter continued to heal the sick, they would have shifted their focus. That talking about human beings would have shifted their focus or interest from the word of God preached by him his own shadow. This would have made them to miss the salvation of their souls. The wise Lord did not let that physical manifestation of his power to continue. Because man would look for that which will work on his physical body at the expense of his own soul. Hence, the supernatural in this physical sense is brief. brief. Again, handkerchiefs and aprons from the body of Paul, the apostle, alone healed the sick and cast out devils. Handkerchiefs and aprons from the body of Apostle Peter and the other apostles, including Barnabas, were not carried to the sick and did not heal the sick nor cast out devils. The ministers of God were nowhere exhorted by Apostle Paul or other New Testament writers to develop faith for this special miracle in their ministry. This special miracle in the ministry of Paul was not duplicated in the ministry of Timothy, Titus, or any of his close associates. This special miracle manifested at a given time in the ministry of Paul, the apostle, only and did not continue for the rest of his life and ministry. When Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, Take no longer water, but take a little wine, beverages, beverages, for your often infirmity, for your stomach's sake, for your often infirmity, where handkerchiefs, healing the sick, Paul would have sent handkerchief to Timothy, who was suffering from stomach problems. To show you, it was a brief miracle that did not continue. This special miracle manifested at a given time in the ministry of Apostle Paul only did not continue for the rest of his life and ministry. Because human beings are more conscious 
of their physical oppressions and afflictions. They are more interested in physical deliverance from bodily sickness and other physical problems than from sin and eternal judgment of God. Her handkerchiefs and aprons from, from Paul kept healing the sick. The fate of men would have rested on those physical objects of power that on the word God that on the word of God that can save their souls. God made this miraculous manifestation of his power very brief in the ministry of Paul and did not bestow it on any other. The garment of Jesus when touched healed a woman. Many when Jesus turned and said who touched me? Peter said master everybody is touching your cloth, tonguing you and you are asking who touched me? Which means the garment of Jesus was not doing a miraculous job for everyone but only those that the Holy Spirit stayed in faith to touch him. Jesus said, no, someone touched me. And the woman came forth to say, I had a conviction that if I would touch the hem of your garment, I would be whole. Which means, it's not just anybody that could be asked to do that, but it is a manifestation and a provocation of faith and that not always. Had the cloth of Jesus been healing the sick? All the time, definitely, enemies would have arrested him to cut off his cloth and so use it for their business of healing and miracles. Had the cloth of Jesus been healing the sick as people touched it, then those people that crucified him at Golgotha and shared his property would have really gotten some magic cloth, miraculous cloth that will be healing the sick and giving them money. That's, my, that's what human beings normally want to do. Today, in the church, the use of handkerchiefs and aprons has become a strong doctrine. Ministers of the gospel now pray on handkerchiefs and aprons to anoint them so they can perform miracles. Those who are oppressed take or send handkerchiefs and aprons to, to ministers to pray on them. Not only the sick now, but those who desire prosperity, special answer to prayer, protection, victory over their enemies, special favor from God, or from Ma, etc., need to develop faith on these anointed handkerchiefs and aprons. Some assemblies organize special service where the worshippers are told to come with their handkerchiefs to be prayed upon. Some other assemblies or ministers sell anointed handkerchiefs and aprons and holy water, other substances, physical substances, to the afflicted ones with the promise of divine healing, deliverance, protection, and prosperity. Church members are made to believe that clothes, shoes, and other items used by their ministers are anointed and can transmit spiritual blessings. People struggle to touch these materials or to use them. Many struggle to sit on the chair their ministers sat on, to sleep on the bed their ministers slept on. These things are not in the spirit of the New Testament church, which doctrine and practice is handed down to us in the Holy Scripture. 
miracles, two anointed handkerchiefs and aprons, and other physical objects, water and extra, etc., practiced by many churches and ministers today have adverse effect on the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is a key factor in religion. This practice works against true faith in God, in the hearts of men. We're going to take a look at the devastate, devastating work of this practice in Christianity. Number one, this practice shifts the faith of worshippers and seekers of divine blessings from God to a physical substance. Men see that it is now the physical object, the handkerchief, the apron, the holy water, and etc. that matters and not the word of God. Not the name of Jesus. Not the blood of Jesus. To them, the anointed handkerchiefs, aprons, or whatsoever physical object promoted carries the power that is in the name of Jesus. The power of the word of God and of the blood of Jesus. This then is another gospel which was not preached to us by the apostles and conveys another spirit which is not the spirit of Christianity. The curse of God raised on those who preach this strange gospel in the name of the Lord by word or practice. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to verse 9, the scripture says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there will be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. The handkerchiefs and the aprons, that are spreading in Christianity today are strange to the New Testament church era. If you look at the epistles, you will not see them except as acted in Acts of the Apostles and as I told you about. But now that it has, they have multiplied the holy water, the aprons, the handkerchiefs, and are now the focus of the people of God in various denominations it shows the church has moved to another gospel and another spirit has taken over and all ministers of all ranks and categories that preach this promote this are under divine curse for shifting the people's eyes from Jesus to physical objects when Cain brought his sacrifice devoid of blood to God, the sacrifice was rejected. The sacrifice that God accepted of Adam was, be, um, of Abel was because it involved the shedding of blood. Without shedding of blood, there's no mercy. Without shedding of blood, there's no demonstration of divine power. For without Jesus, there's no other way. And Jesus is Jesus only because of his sacrifice, his death on the cross. When he rose from the dead, he showed himself to his disciples by referring to his crucifixion. The marks of his crucifixion. Where the blood came forth from mankind. He referred to that. And anything that turns our faith to any object that 
did not involve the blood of Jesus that now becomes the focus of, of the faith of the church is idolatry. Is idolatry. God would not manifest that cons consistently because it would not save the people. Number two. It prevents the salvation of sinners whose faith has been turned from Jesus, the anointed of God, to handkerchiefs, aprons, or any such object promoted by men. Instead of clinging to Christ, trusting on Christ to be saved, they cling to and trust on an anointed object which cannot save them. The sinner to receive salvation and the blessing of God must repent of his sins, confess his sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He must walk in the newness of love because his sins have separated between him and his God. But the doctrine of handkerchiefs, the doctrine of aprons, the doctrine of holy water and material substances have hindered the sinner from believing in Christ because these objects are to minister power without repentance from sin. They are to minister healing and deliverance without calling the sinner to righteousness. So, everyone that purchases these objects keeps them in their house and then consult them or resort to them in times of danger. Hence, faith in the person of Jesus that requires repentance is lost. Hence, sinners have no salvation anymore. And that is why you find them flock themselves in congregations, such congregations, and genuine repentance is absent. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm 115, verse 8 to verse 11, they that meet them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Yea, that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Your faith must be in the Lord alone. Not in handkerchiefs. Not in aprons. Not in holy water. God is your help. God is your shield. Your faith in God requires righteousness. Repentance. Good works. Because your sins will certainly separate you from God. So. Children of God, turn away from aprons. Children of God, turn away from handkerchiefs. Sinners, turn away from aprons. Turn away from handkerchiefs. Turn away from all these bottles of anointing oil that are carrying about and putting all faith and confidence in them. Number three. The practice of this of faith in these physical objects is a subverting of the faith of believers who now are made to believe that the salvation and power of God can be obtained not only by faith in God alone, but also by faith in anointed handkerchiefs, aprons, water, book, calendar, whatever you call them. So, faith in God is not alone, is not enough. You must have faith in God along with apron. You must have faith in God along with handkerchief. You must have faith in God along with carrying anointing oil. You must have faith in God along with some physical object, some holy water. This is a subversion of the faith of believers. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. O oh, foolish Galatians. That ye should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth. 
crucified among you. This only would I, he, would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit. By the works of the law. Or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so, are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit. Are ye now made perfect by the law? Are ye so foolish? Were you born again by April? By touching April? Were you born again by touching handkerchiefs? The two soaked apron in water and drunk and then became born again? How will you become so foolish that your faith should leave Jesus or be mixed between Jesus and apron? An handkerchief is a subverting of your faith. Your faith has been turned upside down. Number four. The use of this physical object is a revisit to the indulgence sold by the Catholic popes during the Dark Ages. During this time, the sinners were told that if they desired the forgiveness of their sins, they should buy the indulgence released for sale by the Pope. The person of Jesus disappeared from sin. It was possession of a physical substance that ministered forgiveness of sins. The promotion of this anointed object is taking over the place of Jesus. Jesus will soon become a shadow if these things continue in the church. The Catholic Pope sold indulgence. People could commit sin. Without repentance, your sins will be forgiven. As long as you bought that substance, that physical substance called indulgence. And this has come back to the church today. The handkerchief, if you can possess it, you possess power. Some sell it. Anointed one. Aprons, they sell it. You buy this apron and put it upon your body. Then you will draw the praises of angels of God. To protect you and to fight for you. Whether you are a sinner or not. That doesn't matter anymore. The place of Jesus has been taken away. The Lord is no more your shepherd. It's the anchor chief in your pocket. It is the apron you are putting on. That is shepherding you. That is guiding you. That is leading you. In John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the lie. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't have access to God by apron. You can't have access to God by faith in handkerchief, faith in anointing oil. You can't have access to God by faith in holy water, faith in any type of cloth bought from anointed people. Anointed by some anointed people. Call them what? You can't have access to God. Without Jesus, there's no way. Without Jesus, there's no way. And Jesus said unto Thomas, Thomas, is it because you have seen me that you believe? Blessed are they that have not seen but do believe. Even the seeing of Jesus in the physical is not something you must be yearning for. Jesus appeared to me now. Jesus come to me now. That does, that's not what saves. He has appeared to so many. And yet they are still sinners. But the Bible says. Blessed are they which have not seen. But do believe. For the just shall live by faith. Number four. This physical object. Faith in this physical object. Is recourse. To the usual temptation of the natural men on earth. Who always seek to represent the living God with a physical object. This is the cause of idolatry among men on earth. These handkerchiefs, aprons, holy water, whatever you call them. Prayed upon are carefully kept and jealously preserved. By church members. Both sinners and believers. They are the first thing to resort to. 
in times of need. These anointed substances are often the objects of heartfelt love, reverence, and adoration. Their presence in the family is as the presence of the Almighty God. Although those who practice this still think that they are worshipping the living God, they have actually slipped into idolatry on a wheels and shall suffer eternal damnation as, I, as other idol worshippers. Moses warned the children of Israel against representing the unseen God by any physical object. The acceptable way to worship and serve the living God and be blessed by him is the way of faith. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 15, verse 16, and verse 19. Take ye heed, take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Note that God instructed Moses to make a serpent-like substance and to raise it upon a pole that whoever was beaten by a serpent should look at it. And that whoever looked at it would be healed. That happened in that era. At that, at that instant. After that event. It ceased. The rod was preserved. <coughs> that rod became an object of worship. People resorted to it. To worship it. It was destroyed 900 years. After, because it became an object of idolatry. Aprons and handkerchiefs were used briefly in the ministry of Paul. But today, they have become objects of idolatry in the churches of Christ. The living God, his power, should not be represented by any substance. For the just shall live by faith. As the word of faith goes, it heals, it saves, it delivers. If for any reason, a physical substance may manifest briefly and very rarely, it's not in the line of common miracles and does not last that the faith of God's people be not subverted. Number six. Many ministers Believers and churches do not bother to know about the scriptural correctness of this practice. All they say is it is working. Miracles are happening to it. But God revealed that many, many miracle workers shall be condemned because they walk in iniquity. For many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils in your name? Have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name done many mighty works? And I shall say unto them, Depart from me, ye, work, ye workers of iniquity, for I know you not. We should not be content that miracles are happening through these things, but must be sure we are living in the will of God, in the light of his world. God can allow a miracle happen and send his judgment after it. 
God instructed Moses and Aaron to speak to the rock to bring forth water from the for the children of Israel to drink. They instead struck the rock, the rock with the rock twice. This was not according to God's instruction. Nevertheless, the miracle happened. God is all wise, patient and kind. Notwithstanding the miracle, Moses and Aaron suffered divine judgment for not acting according to his word. In the book of Numbers chapter 20, I read verse 11 and verse 12. And Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod, uh, uh, he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Be careful. You don't rest on miracles happening. Miracles are happening for your physical body. But your soul will be damned. Number seven. Satan can take an advantage of this ignorance and erroneous practice and cause multiplied miracles to happen through them. Well, men rejoice for the multiplied miracles through faith in these anointed physical objects. Satan and his demons rejoice for the shipwreck of their faith. And the damnation of their souls. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 13 to 15. For such are false apostles. Deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of lie. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Not only physical objects. Now we find that the, ch uh, that the church but leading ones have advanced to using titles, names that have no connection with Jesus. That in the day of trouble, the Bible says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Now another name is given to be called upon in the day of trouble, not the name of the Lord. Not the name of the Lord. Then the glory is not God's glory. Because the power is not God's power. Call upon me. In the day of trouble. I will deliver thee. Then you will give me the glory. Because thine is the power and the glory. If the power comes from me. Then the glory will be for me. But now. The church has been given names. Names of their ministers, names of their denominations, other names to call when they are in trouble and they say these names are working. These phrases are working. These formulas are working. These titles are working. And robbers are bowing to it. Satan demons are fleeing by it. Accidents are being overcome by it. And these have nothing to do with the name of Jesus. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what shall happen to him? He shall be saved. And what is the name of the Lord? Shout that name of the Lord. Shout that name of the Lord. That is what the Holy Scripture, the eternal world, has given to us. Whosoever shall call 
call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, he shall be saved. And the Bible says, for there is none other name given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved. But now, the church has been given another name. The church has been given denominational titles, denominational words, names of their church founders. Call this name anytime you're in trouble. You will find solution. And solution really comes. Solution actually. There are testimonies that solution comes. Do we go by miracles or truth? Which one do we take? Miracles or truth? Tell me the church, which one will you take? Miracles or truth? If you say miracles, the Egyptian magicians performed miracles. Moses threw his rod, his rod into the ground, onto the ground and it became a serpent. The magicians of Egypt did the same. They threw their rods to the ground and they became serpents. Moses turned water into blood. They did likewise. If it is power and miracle you are looking for, you can get them conveniently from devils. But if it is truth, the Bible says you can't find truth in Satan because he's the father of liars. The truth is God. The truth is Jesus. The truth is the divine word. For I am the way, the truth, and the lie. Let the church return to Bible ministry. Let not the miracle ministry operate outside the scriptural pattern. Let not the faith of followers of Christ be turned from him to anointed handkerchiefs, aprons, holy water, or any physical object. If the Holy Spirit decides to use any of these physical, physical things to minister healing and deliverance to anyone in the ministry of any servant of his, he will cause it to happen in his way. But as we see in scripture, it is an uncommon miracle that operates in a man's miracle, miracle ministry for a time and is scarcely repeated after that period and scarcely duplicated. The general way of receiving divine blessings, healing, and miracles are seen in the scriptures by, as seen in the following. Number one, have faith in God. Whatever is your problem, Whatever is your difficulty, whatever deliverance you want, healing you want, have faith in God. Number two, have faith in his word. The Bible says, believe the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. Believe the promises of God. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. That it shall be even as it has been told me. Have faith in the word of God. In the promises of God. Have faith. Believe that it shall be as the Lord has told you. Have faith in the name of Jesus. This is the will of God. That we should believe in the name of Jesus. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands upon the sick. And the sick shall recover. Have faith in the name of Jesus. Even the anointing oil that could be employed upon the sick is optional. It's not compulsory. The name of Jesus alone heals the sick, delivers the oppressed, releases people from demonic power without anointing oil. Don't have faith upon that anointing oil. Have faith in Jesus, in that name. Father, prayer to God in the name of Jesus. Whatever problem you have, pray. Pray without ceasing. Ask anything in my name, I will do it. Ask the Father, anything in my name, he will give it unto you. That means ought always to pray and not to faint. So, prayer is the key. Way how you can get common miracles. Laying on of hands in the name of Jesus. For these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall lay hands upon the sick. And the sick shall recover. This is common miracles. This can be done every day. It can be done every moment. Any minute. You lay hands. This is Bible way. Again. The command of authority and faith. 
in the name of Jesus. For whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt it in his heart, but shall believe that that which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Have faith. Use the command of faith over those forces, over that thing, that mountain on your way. With the name of Jesus, it will work for you. These common miracles, something you can do every day. The prayer and fasting for this kind. Go away not out, but by prayer and fasting. If you have prayed, it's delaying, add fasting to it. To empower your prayer, to effect, or to, to exert greater effect, greater force on such resistance. Confession of faith. Again, for the Bible says, according to the spirit of faith that we have, I have believed so I speak. I believe so I speak. That with the mouth, confession should be made unto salvation. Keep on confessing what you have believed. Keep on confessing what you have believed. With your mouth, confession shall be made unto salvation. Again, repentance and righteous living. Ah, the Bible says that whosoever, whoso, it is that I have prayed and the Lord heareth me because I have not hidden any sin in me. If I hid, if I have iniquity in my life, the Lord would have not hurt me. Therefore, examine yourself and repent. Of any sin that is in your life. Why? Because. Yet cry. My ears cannot hear. Not that the hands of the Lord are shut. Are shortened. That he cannot save. No. His ears dull. That cannot hear you. But your sins have separated. Between God and you. That he cannot hear you. Repent. Wash you. Take away the evils of your doing. Make a new life. Then. Call upon me. I will hear you. Praises, thanksgiving, and worship of God. He that presseth me, who suppresseth me, glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. Now, you can now see in this instance, therefore, that these are scriptural channels of common miracles. And it require, they, they require discipline. They require a kind of fatigue. They require a kind of diligence. They require seeking the Lord. They require purging your life. Bringing yourself to righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. But then, you turn to cheap means. Cheap means. Shortcut. Shortcut. Apron. Handkerchief. Holy water to sprinkle in your business premises. To hang on, on your car that your car may not have accident. To hang in your house that witches and wizards may not come there. To suck it and drink that the sicknesses of your body should be healed. These things lack this spiritual discipline required of you. Know ye not that some mountains were allowed, are allowed in your life to exercise your faith. To develop your faith. But you have, they have told you cheap means. And that is for your destruction. That is for your shame. That is for your damnation. In Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Thus see the Lord. Stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And world therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. We will not walk therein. Why? There are sinners that don't want to repent. They don't want the hard way. They don't want to stop their evil. Go and buy this thing that all. Oh, that minister is selling it. The ministers are selling these things. Making money by them. Have you considered how much money is made by these aprons? And where the, the money goes to? Have you considered how much money is made by these handkerchiefs? And where the money goes to? These physical ups, subjects, objects that you buy. Have you considered how much money? Corrupt 
business. That's the, that's the price for your damnation. A price of damnation. Devoid of the blood of Jesus. Jesus is not in those things. Jesus is not in those things. Talk about the word of God. The Bible says there are three that bear record in, on earth. The word, the blood, and the spirit. They are one. The word goes with the blood. To get you safe and cleanse. The word goes with the blood. And the name of Jesus, that's the name of he that sacrificed himself for you. The name of he, you call the name of Jesus, you remember that man of Galilee. That man of Calvary. That man that hung on the cross. Where there was, that was covered with blood for mankind. That is what is given to you. That is what heaven recognizes. Your faith is turned away. To physical substance devoid of the blood of Christ. You're carrying them about. You're not serving idols. You have left Jesus. You have backslidden. Your name has left the book of life. It's unfortunate. How? Who has bewitched you? Who is this man that the devil used to bewitch you, to destroy your faith and render you void? Render you empty. Render you devoid of grace. You're going to rise up and repent. You're going to tell God, I repent of handkerchiefs and aprons. I repent of anointing, this anointed water, carrying up bottles of anointing oil, sprinkling it in your house. Contrary to the word of God, bottles of demonic oil, bringing in the praises of demons to you always, and you dream bad dreams by them. Rise up upon your feet and begin to confess and say, Divine, I'm sorry. I didn't know like that before. I didn't know these things. I didn't know these things. Destroy them in your life, in your house, in your hands. Show genuinely that you have repented. Show it. You have repented. Dissociate from ministers of damnation that are turning you to idolatry. Removing your faith from Jesus. They are cursed. They are cursed. Except they repent. They are doomed forever. <clears throat> Open your mouth and plead with God. Plead upon the blood of Jesus. So without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. It is the blood that gives us access to the Father. Dead substances have taken over. Faith has been turned to dead substances. Jesus name we pray. I am ready to obey your word. I am ready to obey your word. Hallelujah. Obey your word, the living word. In Jesus' name, I am ready to obey the living word of God. Obey your word. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, divine. Thank you for your presence that has come down. 
worship i'm so grateful i want to announce to you jesus is here hmm. let your faith be on him let your faith be on him let your faith be on jesus he has come himself worship thank you lord worship We are ready to obey your word, Lord Jesus. Forevermore. We are ready to obey your word, the living word. 